stem cell transplants, so the patients are available for us to try new therapies out. <coughs> Uh, this is the IP situation that was developed on IP that, that uh, came from Caltech and David Baltimore's lab in terms of the B cell genetic engineering. It's been uh, expanded upon at Immisoft. The asset acquisition agreement included a, uh, an exclusive license to use the sleep beauty transposon system for MPS1 and an exclusive option to license for hemophilia A and B, which is essentially all of hemophilia, and uh, also for other lysosomal diseases. This is the team, it includes people locally uh, in Minnesota, including myself, the team in Seattle, and our CEO, Matt Schultz. <clears throat> uh, the company has so far raised $6 million uh, from some rather prominent investors, and is currently seeking $20 million in Series B funding to support the launching of this first Phase one clinical trial and expand this into a second clinical trial. This is a phase one clinical trial for a trio to MPS1 uh, to uh, address safety and efficacy. And then um, uh, this shows the uh, inclusion, correct? And then the idea ultimately then is to expand from this rare disease, markets limited, probably 800 million, to uh, a more common but uh, uh, larger market, maybe 6 billion for the hemophilias and then uh, ultimately go into much uh, larger markets here. So that's, that's Immusoft, that's what we work on, that's what we're looking for. If you'd like to know more, you can uh, visit us at immusoft.com or you can ask me now. Thank you. Your clinical development plan <clears throat> is nicely defined there. How many years till your uh, projecting revenue and how much expense to get there? Oh, well, so in order to get revenue, you, you'd have to go through phase one, phase two, you have to go through, yeah, so uh, I would say five years. Five years? Yeah. How much money? How much are you going to spend? I mean, oh. What would you expect you'd spend to, to go through those five years? Oh, it's, it, that's going to have to go to, you know, hundreds, hundreds of millions, yes. Okay. And yes. that's just for the one um, MSP1 product. How far behind are the others? Oh, um, we're following on rather uh, rapidly. We've already have some of the, um, the, the uh, initial expression data for um, hemophilia and for uh, some, from some other enzymes as well. Any questions? All right. Well, thanks, Scott. Uh, thank you. So um, thanks for being here. I'm Kawai Peng, and I am a co-founder and chief operating officer of Humanist Life Sciences and professor of oncology at Mayo. So I own equity in the company, and so Mayo and myself have a financial interest in it. So um, Humanist Life Sciences is one of the first Mayo EEP program founded four years ago, and we are headquartered at the Bio Business Center. We're on the ground level, and there we have built our research labs as well as manufacturing labs to support our business model. So what do we do? We provide products, services to support the emerging fields of regenerative medicine, virus therapy, gene therapy, and cellular therapy. You heard of many, many therapies presented here today. Many of them are in regenerative medicine and stem cell technologies. You know it's an expanding field. We feel we came in at the right time because there is an unmet need. Well, we all develop innovative therapies, but very often we do not know where they go. We put it in large animal models, small animal models, and eventually in humans. You're essentially putting your cell therapies or gene therapies in a black hole if they are not monitored. So what Imanis does is to provide a reporter gene technology, products and services to support all your research needs in these following areas. Here you see an animal that is rotating with high resolution imaging that we could observe. That's a AAV gene transfer 
And then there is the sleeping beauty, gene delivery to the liver, as well as the virus, measles virus spread within the tumor. You can clearly see the durability of your gene expression. Where has your therapies gone? And importantly, you no longer have to harvest those animals at various time points, and this is especially critical when, into, when you move into large animal models such as this at Mayo Clinic in a study performed by Maggie Redfield and Steve Russell. Here's an image of the heart of an animal, a dog in this instance, where we have given the AAV gene transfer, and it can clearly show you the durability of gene expression, the location, and whether you have achieved enough gene expression levels. <clears throat> so over these four years, we have built an extensive product list. We hope that you'll be able to incorporate all these technologies into your research because it will empower you in your drug development as well as research. We have over 200 products. I have brought our product line, and this is cell lines. <laughs> We sell luciferase reporter cell lines for half the cost of our major competitor. So why wouldn't you buy from us? Thank you very much. Hi. How, how many sales have you had? Or what was your, what's your revenue to date? Um, we have actually um, had a million dollars in revenue last year. We have doubled from the previous year, so we are on target. We already have sold more products this year than the whole of last year. So we are on target to double our revenue from last year. We also have been very successful in obtaining NIH SBI grants. That's a fantastic way to, in order to develop our R&D, and we have been developing the next generation of reporter genes. And, and what outlet are you using to, to sell your products, and how do you get the word out? That is actually a, one of our major brain uh, uh, headaches, because the, we had a sales rep at the beginning, and in the end, what we realized, and it's a learn, learning process, after six months, he did not make a single sale. We pay him a base salary and a commission. And in, what we ended up doing is go, go to trade shows, go to the correct trade shows, pay about few thousand dollars for a booth, and actually word of mouth, and sending out um, flyers, as well as doing webinars. What's your profit margin on that million in revenue? You know, that's a very good question. It comes from various sources, so the different, they have different profit margins, and I can discuss in detail with you at a, another, in another platform. Overall, approximately. Um, I'd rather not discuss that. Can companies approach you with uh, a certain experiment in mind and you can configure the assay for it? Is that a typical service that you would run? Yeah, we can. So uh, very often, Howie has um, a lot of these, um, how you say, clients come to us. They will say, I would like to ask where my sales have gone or I'd like to have, I have this idea. Um, the most recent one was that I would like to protect my IP using an oncolytic virus. Can you design from concept? So what we have to have, and that is some of the problem I am facing, is the growth. Is As a service, you need your high-caliber um, scientists. You have a good team. Team building is critically important, and that is one of the headaches I have. So we design for you all the vectors. We perform the in-life imaging for you to whatever degree you prefer. And we have been having great partners with the Mayo Clinic to enable us to do some of these studies. So I've asked one of our walleyes to do double duty. I was a little disappointed to hear that you didn't bring one of your demonstration products, but apparently it doesn't fit in your car. Is that how it works? All right, Perry, this is Perry with uh, Recombinetics. Thank you very much, Steve. And, and thank you all for coming. Uh, you can see from this slide that uh, I don't always obey uh, the suggestions, but what this slide is meant to represent is that I've spent the past 15 years, 16 years now of my life, taking model systems to human benefit. So we all know that the CRISPR-Cas technology has taken over everybody's imagination for genome editing, but let's not forget that in the 21st century, the real efficient genome editing was introduced by Dan Voitas around 2010 from the Center of Genome Engineering. Might add that Steve Ecker was the first head of the Beckman Center that uh, 
preceded the Center for Genome Engineering. The big questions are, what do you do with it? The old-fashioned genetic engineering was just the equivalent of adding an expression cassette to a genome. That's like adding a sentence to a book. In today's world, though, we talk about genome editing precision, changing one character in a thousand books. That's what we do. Anything can be written. Minnesota, we have to realize, is the focus for genetic editing applications in agriculture. I'd like to describe them. So I'm representing Recombinetics now, both as a co-founder and a member of the board, a former chief science officer. On this slide you see on the left, the genome editing on large animals can be applied to, in fact, large-scale agriculture. At the very bottom you see that starvation is beginning to increase worldwide. The World Food Organization estimates we'll have to double the food supply by 2050 to accommodate everybody in 2050 with adequate nutrition. We have a choice of either greatly expanding the efficiency of agriculture or, of course, going into lands that we'd otherwise like to keep pristine. In the middle, it's represented the ability of genetically editing animals to more reasonably recapitulate human diseases and disorders. And we do that mainly in pigs. And that's our lead-off models, as you'll see. A third area is to grow human organs in pig avatars. I won't be talking about that. That's about 20 years down the road. What I would like to show you, though, is, and you've seen uh, the picture of Burry and Spotted G in the upper right-hand corner already, thank you, uh, that Acelogen, which is our division for genome editing of agricultural animals, is very robust. Down at the bottom, you can see our double-muscled uh, cows that we've produced. Any lines that you see that go beyond that... Uh, Second vertical line represent animals on the ground. Others are on the ground, but in testing and being validated. We have any number of other animals that are in our freezers ready to be made when we find partners for their development. Surgeon is our animal model system, and that's a far more robust area where we're already making sales. You can see our... Uh, Pig for metabolic syndrome in the upper right. We have an atherosclerosis model pig. You can see a little bit of his disorder. We have a model for um, cardiomyopathy. And then down below, a pig that represents polycystic kidney disease. The little red oval represents the size of a normal kidney. The dotted line indicates the kidney in this particular